Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to create a mathematical model, a formula, which will do its best to match the data points that we plotted last time. So I'm just going to slide that across a little bit to give myself some room and I think I will insert a few more rows here to give myself a little bit more space to work with. That sounds good. <coughs> now, uh, before I uh, start working on my model, taking a look at this, it looks like some sort of a trigonometric function. It looks like a, a crest, then coming down to a trough, and then back up to a crest. So it's a cyclic type of a change. And cyclic things, which happen quite often in nature, are often modelled very well by something like a sine or a cosine formula. Uh, we call that our model. Now before I uh, get too detailed, I'm just going to add an equation here. This is just a little uh, reminder. And I'll type the equation, uh, except I missed. Well, here we go, y equals a by the sine of bx plus c plus d. Now uh, that's a bit small so I'll increase the size of that a bit and I'll put a little tiny bit of shading behind there. So that is, that's the formula that I'm going to choose to work with to try and model this data. It's definitely a a periodic function and so sine is a good choice. The capital letters A, B, C and D are what we call the parameters of the model. These are numbers. Uh, I don't know what the numbers are yet but that's the, that's the goal if you like to find the right set of numbers. So I'm just going to set up some data cells here A, B, C and D and just to begin with so that everything works I'll put the numbers 1. Uh, um, to make them stand out make them a little bit special. I might put a little bit of shading behind those. And those numbers there, I'm going to change. In a minute, uh, I'll make a note that this column is my data and this column is my model, my mathematical formula, if you like. So what do I need to do with this? Well, I need an Excel formula that looks like a by the sine of bx plus c plus d, where I refer to the value of a, b, c and d from up here. So let's see if I can do that. I'll start with an equal sign. Where it says capital A, I'll click on that cell and again I'll press the F4 key to make that an absolute reference because I always want the a, the b, the c and the d to be from these four cells, even when I copy down the page. Asterisk is multiplication. Then I type sine, that's fine. Open my brackets. Now I would normally start to go B, X plus C at this stage, but I do have to warn you that Excel works in a measurement called radians for angles. Now, you'll learn about radians when you're in grade 11, but at this stage, uh, we will just use the built-in function radians to convert angles from degrees into the measurement that Excel needs. It's a bit like converting from kilometres to miles. As long as it's taken care of, everything works. We don't need to know the details at this point in our, our uh, lives how that works, but it, it's needed for Excel. So now I'll put, um, I'm up to the BX plus C. So there's B. F4 again, multiplied by. Now, when it, see that the, the X here is a lowercase letter, so is the Y. These are the variables. So what is the X value? Well, the X values on my chart are the day numbers, and in this particular case, that would be the number zero. In other words, cell B9. I am not going to put dollar signs on B9. When I copy this formula downwards, I want the next row to be looking at B10 for the X value, and then B11, and so on. So that's the X. Now I have to go plus C. Again, that's a fixed constant. I close the brackets, 
Notice how they flashed red for a moment. That's the radiance function. I close the brackets again. That's the sine function. And now I put plus D, which is that one there, and I press F4. Now, apart from the radiance part, it looks almost identical to this, where the A, the B, the C, and the D are replaced by the references to these cells. When I press Enter, I get an answer, which is nowhere near what I wanted. I want the numbers in this to match the numbers here. Now, don't worry too much at this stage. I'll double click there to copy those down. And there is a set of numbers which is not going to match. I get that. But we'll, we'll adjust. Now I'll bring this back over. I'm going to add this set of numbers to my scatter chart. So uh, notice I've clicked on the chart. Go up to the Design tab. Then select Data. Now I'm going to add a data series. The X values are the day numbers from 0 to how far did they go? 358. The Y values are these new numbers here. OK and OK. Now, it's nowhere near what I need it to be. But at least it's there. And once it's there, I can start to adjust my values of A, B, C and D. These are the parameters. If I adjust the parameters, this will change. Now before I get too detailed into that, I'm going to format that data series, series number two, and again, the little thing that looks like a bucket of paint. This time I will have no markers. I don't want dots or, or X's, I'll say none for the markers. And before I lose it, I'll go across to the line, I'll have a solid line, and the orange is a nice contrasting colour. And let's make it about 1.5 points, so it's a nice thin line. Now the fun begins. I get to change the numbers A, B, C and D until the orange line matches this one. I think it's easier to start with D. Remember D represents the equilibrium value. Now the equilibrium value for mine here looks to be about 12. So I'll put 12. And there we go. That's not too bad. Now I'll go to A. A represents the amplitude, so from the equilibrium to the maximum looks to be upwards by about 2, and from equilibrium to here looks to be downwards by about 2. So I put 2, then OK, that's not too bad. Now, I've got uh, B represents, is a measurement that controls the wavelength. The wavelength looks about right because I've got almost, I think I've got about one cycle here for my blue data points, and that's pretty much one cycle as well. So I think that's okay. C is the phase shift. It will slide my orange line to the left or to the right. Let me just uh, try making that one. Let's make that about 90. Pretty close, not too bad. Uh, maybe I need to go a little bit more, say 91. It's very, very subtle. Maybe jump to 95. And maybe my amplitude was slightly too big. Maybe it's not too. Maybe it was 1.9. Perhaps 1.8. So that's looking pretty close. My model is doing a pretty good job, just judging by the, the picture. It's doing a pretty good job of matching the data. And you can see here, the data was 13.85. My model is predicting 13.79. Not bad. If I slide down to the middle, say where my data was at 10.4, I've got 10.2. A bit on, a little bit worse there, but it's still not terrible. Now that's the end of this instalment. We have created a model. The model is of the form of a sine function controlled by the parameters A, B, C, and D. Parameters is a fancy word for numbers, and model is a fancy word for equation. And I've adjusted the numbers, A, B, C, and D, the parameters. I've, uh, the, the fancy way would say, I've explored the parameter space. In other words, I've 
change the numbers A, B, C and D until my model matches my data, at least approximately. Okay, that's enough for this time. Thanks for watching.